Welcome back to Al's Kitchen, the guy that teaches you how to cook your favorite British Indian takeaway curries at home. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. This week I'm gonna be cooking a nice chicken samba. This is to thank someone who sent me a nice 10 pint keg of low and brow beer on my, my machine, my PD machine. And I've just poured myself a nice stein to thank you for sending me it you know who you are one of the good things about being a youtuber is that people send you things for free anyway i've had a fantastic week i actually met none other than the lovely john robbins radio present tv comedian we went to south london had a few pints I had a curry he brought his mate along rob and they carefully chose a nice restaurant in south london and we had a really great night out laughing and joking and drinking and eating curry beer drinking curry match made in heaven i even gave him my one and only prototype apron which is why i'm not wearing it now talking about aprons i've just made a super duper large order and they will be coming to me and they will be ready to order soon there are a limited amount that i've ordered so catch them while you can because i don't know whether it's going to be an ongoing thing Al's kitchen it's all about the base join the party well let's get on to today's curry cooking a chicken samba now, samba is not a curry that you see on a lot of restaurant Indian menus, similar to a pathia curry. But you'll also notice with British Indian restaurant style curries, some of them can be quite similar. And it might just be a, the change of just one or a few ingredients that makes the difference. And that's the case with this samba. Starting here, I have a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of tandoori masala powder, a quarter teaspoon of garam masala. That's all the quarters out of the way. We're gonna be using uh, two teaspoons of garlic and ginger paste, one teaspoon of black mustard seeds, and one teaspoon of methi powder, a teaspoon of hot chili powder, just short of a tablespoon of um, Owl's Kitchen mix powder or mix powder. I'll be leaving the recipe for this in a card that's gonna pop up on your screens just here and in the description box below. I'm using chicken tikka, I've got eight pieces here, and you can use uh, pre-cooked chicken, raw chicken, king prawns, lamb. Check out my tender lamb recipe. Again, I'll be leaving the link in the description box and in a pop-up card here. And here I have two tablespoons of tomato puree. And all I've done with this is mix it with water, just so that it can be poured when we're making our curry. Now this curry does have lentils in, dal, and I'm using um, chana dal here. You can use any dal you like, just not the green ones. We're using a squirt of lemon, um, some coriander, plus some coriander for the garnish. And also I'm gonna be adding a dollop of mango chutney. Now you can use sugar instead of mango chutney to sweeten the dish, but if you're gonna sweeten the dish, it's better to add another little flavor, I think. Just make an inner circle, that should be enough. It's been a great summer so far, isn't it? I mean, I know May was um, a write-off, what with all the rain, but we've had plenty of heat and sun now. All right, so once we've warmed up the oil, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding the black mustard seeds, and we're gonna wait for these just to pop a little bit. And as soon as you hear the first pop, that's when you go in with the rest of your ingredients. If you wait for them all to pop, probably most of them would have burnt by that time. And what we're gonna do after that is add um, about two teaspoons of garlic and ginger paste. This is the fresh type or the frozen type. Don't be using the jars. Preservatives in the jars, um, it's basically vinegar. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna make your curry taste of vinegar. Right, so then put in about two teaspoons of the garlic and ginger paste. Fry that down for 30 seconds, just to mellow out the garlic and take out those raw flavors. Do you know what, sometimes I forget how lucky I am cooking these British Indian restaurant style curries. I mean, I remember when I first discovered how to make them, I just, I just felt that I'd, I'd found something so special. And uh, sometimes you can become complacent and forget. So now what I'm doing is putting in all the spices, the mixed powder, Okay, so we're just gonna cook those spices out. If you watch my other videos, you've seen that there's a pattern to building these curries. That's amazing. So we're frying those out. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the methi and I'm gonna pinch that into the dish. 
I'm going to add a, just a, a tiny drizzle of base gravy just to loosen that down. Use the back of the spoon. Prevents all that irritating uh, scraping, which I used to do in my early videos. So what are we drinking, people? Mm. Look at the size of this, bigger than my head, look. Fabulous. That's right, so now we're going to add the tomato paste. Cook that out a bit. People keep asking me where I'm getting these high sided pans. Um, I will leave a link in the description box below. Um, but as soon as I do, they'll probably be sold out. I have no affiliation with any uh, companies, but they are fantastic. So cook that down. When you cook the tomato paste out, again, that softens too, and it brings out the sweetness of the tomatoes. Right, so, that's all the spices done. Okay, so let's go with our chicken, chicken tikka, king prawn or lamb. Right. Let's put some heat through that. This samba curry is really delicious. I'm really sorry that I've not brought it to you sooner, to be honest. Right, so we're going to take lemon and give it a little squirt, only a little squirt. That's it. Right, and now what we're going to do is add one full ladle of base gravy. So base gravy is basically what restaurants use to turn out these uh, style of curries. You won't find these curries in any Indian cookbooks that you find on the shelf in your local bookstore. So we've got the base gravy going and what we're going to do is we're just going to cook that down until all the water evaporates out of the base and it thickens down and it creates that lovely finger licking sauce that you get in those curries that you're used to from the takeaways. Right, on a burner like this, that really shouldn't take too long. Right, so what we're waiting for is oil separation. Once the oil comes to the surface, you realise that the base is cooked out and you can either add some more of this base um, or not, depending on the consistency that you're, you're looking for. So let the base gravy do its magic on the aluminium. Aluminium is the best surface to be cooking your Indian style um, curries. That's because it has great sticking properties. So you caramelise the gravy, it becomes sweet, you turn it into the curry, and then basically it's an added ingredient, natural sweetness from the onions that's liquidised in the base gravy. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of mango chutney, um, or, or two dollops. This is a great addition to any curry. You know, when you're making your curries, spice things up, put things in them, um, create the flavours that you like. Don't just, you know, stick to recipes. You know, this is what Indian restaurants do. I mean, they'll make a few minor or subtle changes and then they'll make a different curry and just make up a name for it. Then if it's tasty and nice and people buy it, they justify the change. Okay, so what I'm going to add now are these lovely lentils. Lentils change the profile of the curry and they make the curry low glycemic index. Just healthier. Right, so again with the lentils, when you cook them, you can either cook them to a mash or you can cook them so they maintain their shape. Now, I like the lentils to maintain a little bit of shape and dissolve naturally, so I cook them for a little bit, yeah? Right, quarter teaspoon of salt. Turn all that lovely 
caramelised gravy in. So it catches on the bottom a little bit and that all adds to the flavour. And again, the consistency of the gravy is entirely down to you. If you want it runny, don't reduce it down as much or add more base gravy. If you want it thicker, cook it down until it becomes very thick. I'm just going to thin that out a little bit more for my, li my liking. Add a handful of uh, fresh coriander. Beautiful. Smells amazing. When I see your family spreads that you're making, and when expats from around the world are e emailing me, telling me that discovering my channel has changed their life and made their move abroad perfect. I think that is almost ready to serve up. Here we go, one chicken samba in a nice balty bowl. I mean, it looks very intense, doesn't it? Absolutely beauty. Check out that gravy, look at that. Look at the sheen and the glisten on that. All we want to do, you know the tips of the trade now. We just want to put some lovely fresh coriander over that. And with the lemon, one slice of lemon, I just literally cut from here right down. And all you do is you make an S and you place that on top like that. And then we have one chicken samba. Now it's time for the taste test. Look at that beauty, eh? Here goes, look. Take a little bit of chicken and lentil. Mmm, that is absolutely divine. Oh my God, that is sublime. It's got a lovely rich flavour. The tomato tones come to the fore. It's got a nice medium to high heat. Sweet and the sour textures of the uh, mango chutney with the lemon juice. This is amazing. Mmm, fantastic. Please make this at home. Like and subscribe to the channel. I'm getting my tongue in a twist. I'm going to finish this and my beer off. I'll be seeing you very shortly. Got a few sus got a few sus got a few surprises up my sleeve too. Not that I wear sleeves, but I'm out. And I'm out of here.